before we start, I want to kindly thank Ian Moore and UK Rob M for buying us a cuppa since the last video. It's always appreciated. And during the month of November, anyone who does buy a cuppa could win a St. Harrison mug. You lucky people. It's something to give to people you hate at Christmas if you do win it. Looks nice here, doesn't it? Don't mind me, ladies. This is Trento in Italy, full of Italians, pasta, pizza and lovely buildings. But it hides a dark secret, because once upon a time, it became gripped by the oldest known hatred in the world. The one that popped up all over the world, quite a lot for no reason at all. And completely inexplicably. How do these things happen? This is little Simon. He was born in 1472. When he was just two and a half years old, he'd obviously learnt to walk and had gone for a wander the day before Good Friday. His father discovered he was missing at about 5pm and went searching for him, but he didn't have any luck. On Good Friday, the father went to the Prince Bishop and reported his child missing. He spread descriptions of Simon all around and in the coming days, people from across the city went in search of the young boy. Family, friends, locals, even some of the local Jewish community went to help too. Surely a sign that they weren't involved. So we know they were here at 6.15. Well, we have an eyewitness. Ian Huntley here is a familiar figure. Evening, Ian. For no reason at all, Simon's father asked the Prince Bishop to get his men to search the houses of the local Jewish community because he had an anti-Semitic hunch, but unfortunately, nothing was found. A local Jewish man by the name of Samuel had quite a large property, and on Easter Sunday, his cook went to the cellar to get some water and found the body of young Simon. Breaking ranks, would you believe it, he reported this to the Prince Bishop, who sent his men to retrieve the body. Following the discovery and it being determined that he didn't just wander down to the cellar by himself, drain all of his own blood and lay in the well, all the local Jews were nicked and questioned over the sacrificial death. It's all a bit like William of Norwich, who we looked at last time. In total, 15 Jewish men were executed for their part in the crime. Jewish women were exempt from the death penalty because their religion states they can't take part in male rituals. So that's okay then. One Jewish man turned Christian to avoid getting the death penalty. However, his fellow Jews who were still alive grasped him up and he eventually got ended as well. This all led to an increase of trouble between Christians and Jews, the trouble being that Christians were beating them up for being ritual murderers. It all ended when Jews were expelled from Vicenza in 1846. Of course, over the years, things have changed, and since then the Catholic Church have denounced all of this and said that it wasn't a Jewish ritual, and this is all just a massive coincidence, and just because you find a kid drained of blood in a Jewish person's house doesn't mean that they had anything to do with it, even if they confessed to it. Now, with this happening in both Norwich and Trento, who couldn't exactly call each other and plan this kind of thing, surely it's just completely random, right? This is Damascus. Surely the people here wouldn't have anything against those of a Jewish background. In 1840, a Christian monk was killed called Father Thomas. But who did it? Was it his wife? Was it a local Muslim? Was it Assad? No, Father John and his Muslim servant were last seen in the Jewish quarter. A Jewish barber confessed to it and named seven other prominent local Jewish men as well who were also involved and they also confessed. Now it's important to note that they were confessing under torture but the bones of the victims were found in the Jewish quarter and other Jewish prisoners also grasped them up they certainly will throw each other under the bus very quickly. After these confessions became known to the Christian locals and the Muslim locals, well known for their restraint, it did lead to some kickings. Ultimately, the Ottoman Empire head at the time, in 1840, denounced all the retaliation and prohibited blood libels. With this as their edict. Hmm, still. I'm sure there are no more examples of all these coincidences. Well, this certainly isn't Damascus. This is Lincoln. 
in Lincoln lived little Hugh, a nine-year-old boy. On the 27th of August 1255, little Hugh went missing from his home. His mother, a widow named Beatrice, searched for him everywhere but couldn't find him. It wasn't until several days later that his body was discovered in a well outside the city walls. Many such cases. His body was said to have been mutilated and drained of blood. We've heard this before. Rumours began to circulate that a group of Jews had been seen in the area around the time of Hugh's disappearance and that they were responsible for his murder. King Henry III ordered an investigation into Hugh's death and several Jewish men were arrested and accused of murder. They were subjected to torture and forced to confess to their crimes. Now, despite some protests from some members of the clergy and of course the Jewish community, they're known for um, protesting, the accused men were found guilty and then executed. But their deaths only served to fuel more kickings going on around the city. Despite the many such cases, the story of Little Hugh has now been debunked by, well, you know who, as a myth. It's now believed that he may have simply fallen into the well accidentally, or that he was a victim of a random act of violence. However, as we know, not many young kids fall into wells and are beaten up and drained of their blood. But who knows, to be anti-Semitic, to consider it as anything else. Remember, if a dead body is found in a particular community and there are witnesses and confessions, it doesn't mean that they did it, and to say so is completely wrong. Until next time, ta-ta for now. If you enjoyed this video for it's slightly less shit than the others, you can always buy us a cup on Kofi, and that could win you a mug. Also, keep your kids inside around Easter. Ta-ta for now. Do you need piles of shoes?